Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Good to see you guys. Welcome, welcome. We are going to try a new setup today, which will enable us to have guests join us. This will be a really exciting, different experience, but I hope that it is enjoyable for you guys. All right. I'm going to wait a second for a few more people to join us. Get your paper and pencil ready. It is almost the third Sunday of Lent. How's everybody doing with your Lent so far? It's been tough? Yeah, tough. Hard to remember. He's Harry, let me know. He's around here somewhere, but I have not seen him yet. Let's see if we can get him to come up here before we start doing our practice circles. You guys want to comment, Harry, 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 post in the comment. Come on, Harry. We want to see you. Come on, Harry. Let's write his name because he's not coming. I don't see him anywhere. No, Harry. No, Harry. Harry needs to come here. Because the Harry is not here. All right. I don't know, guys. We'll have to keep looking for him. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I see Harry. Hey. Harry's here. He made it. Awesome, Harry. Good to see you. You excited today? You look like you're excited. You look like you're ready to go. All right. Welcome, Harry. We are going to have some fun. We're going to draw some circles today. Get practicing. Get warmed up. And then we're going to do a Lent desert scene. Lent is like being in the desert. Like John the Baptist was in the desert for 40 days. So we're going to draw a desert scene for 40 days. And we'll do some cactus drawings. It'll be really fun. And something you'll be proud of. All right, Harry, you got your paper ready? You got your pen? You ready to start drawing? All right, let's do it. All right, we'll see you in a little bit, Harry. Okay, we're going to start doing our circles now. Okay, everybody. Let's start drawing your circles. Loosen up. Flexible, get some movement in your hand and your arms. Draw some simple circles, draw some bigger circles. This is important because everything is made up of circles. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen let's do contour lines. Contour lines are when you create a curve around the shape to make it look like it has form, three dimensional. I'm gonna draw some contour lines. See how that now becomes a three dimensional shape? You draw a circle, and then you're just drawing smaller curves that match the same shape. 
and then they go the other way. Get out. All right, let's do some lines now. Straight line. All right, we feeling pretty warmed up. Yeah? Thumbs up if you're feeling warmed up. Ready to go? All right. I am going to show you a quick video. One second. It's going to be a preview of what we're going to draw in a little bit. But I just want you to see some ideas. So as we get into our desert scene later on, we've got some ideas of things to, to draw. So you see the cactuses, the mountains. We'll pull this up again a little bit later. I just wanted you to see it. And go through it one more time. So look at the mountains. Look how there's items in the background, items in the foreground. Foreground is what's closest to you. Background is what's furthest away. Different kinds of cactus, different kinds of mountains, different types and styles of drawings. There's a, a moon or a sun. It's an eagle. All right. So now we're going to practice drawing a couple cactus. I'm going to put back up on the screen that final image with all the different kinds of cactus on it. So I want you to look at the top left cactus, and we're going to draw that one first, okay? So this is going to be a tall, skinny circle. It comes down. The bottom hits the ground, so it doesn't have a curve like the top. It's, it's more of a half circle. You can see that? And then it's going to have an arm off to the side. It's wider at the top, thinner at the bottom. And then in this drawing, it has some flowers. You can add some flowers to yours or not, depending on the season. And it's got some contour lines here. Contour lines are helping you to see how it curves. All right. The contour lines on the left curve on the left, and the contour lines on the right curve on the right. And then the contour line that's in the front pretty much goes straight down. See how that makes it curve around the cactus? Different than what's on the screen. They just drew a straight line. But the curves actually make it feel a little bit more three-dimensional. And you can give it a couple little spines on it. And just for fun, I think this has a face. I think there's a little character here. I'm gonna draw some eyes on here. And then it's got a pointy nose. He's waving. So we've got some motion lines here showing that he's waving. Maybe his other arm is down. Got some contour lines here. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow behind his head onto the arm and then a little shadow on the side. And then we're going to shade this left side. All right, now let's try another cactus. Another common one that we see is the one on the lower left. So let's do that one. This is his little friend down here. So 
So here you can get really creative. You're just making smaller ovals attached to smaller ovals. You can be as creative as you want. You don't have to follow exactly what's on the screen. We're going to add a few contour lines here. I'm not going to add as many as the other one because the other one actually has ridges in the cactus and this one doesn't. And we'll add some spines. And put a face on this guy looking down. All right. Someone just messaged and said you couldn't see the drawing. I'm making it much bigger so you can see it now. All right. More spines. We're going to add a shadow at the bottom. He didn't have a shadow. We should add a shadow to him as well. And then we'll shade the left side, get some shadow. Grab his mouth. There we go. A little nose, it's a spine too. All right, we're going to do one more. Another one that's really common here in Mexico. Round cactus with spines all over the top. I can show you the picture of what we're looking at. It is lower right. Some flowers in the top. So this one is critical to have the contour lines. And here, because it's a circle, I'm just drawing oval that's getting smaller after oval that's getting smaller. And on the top of it, it's going to have, let me show you another picture. If this is the cactus we just drew, the top of it has a, an oval at the top. This is where the flower actually comes out of. And usually it's lighter in color, and then the contour lines come off of it. And then a quick little lesson about shading. If the sun is here, the rays of the sun shoot out in this direction. So when the sun comes down, it hits the side, goes down to the ground. This is your horizon line. The sun comes down, hits the side, goes down. Because it's a three-dimensional object, the sun wraps around. If it's a square, there's a hard edge. But an oval or a sphere has soft edges. So the sun actually can wrap around this way. You don't have to draw the arrows if you don't want to. It wraps around this way. It's brighter on this side because the sun is over here, darker over here. But there's going to be light here. This is the darkest section. And then it gets lighter. Since I have these contour lines, I'm going to just show you how that will manifest. So this is going to be the darkest section. It's going to get a little bit lighter here. And then this part will have light shining on it. Again, as we get closer to the right side, it's going to get lighter and lighter. So you can see how it becomes a three-dimensional shape. 
the sun wraps around it. And then to make it look like it's sitting on this, this desert land, we're going to make it dark here. Right where it hits the ground is the darkest. And then the shadow is going to come from here to here. So we're just going to draw another circle or an oval. Not like this. I mean, darkest where it touches here. And then it gets lighter as it gets further away. Now, depending on the tool you're using, how you create the shading will be different. If you're using a pen like this, you're going to use lines. It's hard to draw over top of charcoal. So first, to shade something with a pen. And a pen is probably my favorite tool. You're going to create lines to make the shadow. And then depending on how far spaced out the lines are, the lighter it'll appear. You see that? And then if you want to make it darker, you do cross hatching. You go across the lines that you already have, and that will make it appear darker as well. And then you can cross again when it gets really close to the bottom of the cactus. Okay. If you're using a pencil, like in this case, you can create a shade by using the angle of the pencil as it touches and you're blending the shadow out. So it really just depends on what tool you're using and how you want to create the shadow. Then you want to make it darker on this side and then it fades out to the light. If you're using a pencil like I have, something fun that you can also do, you can use your finger and you can actually smear the shadow. does make your finger dirty, but it's really fun to do. I like drawing where I can use my finger because it just feels a little bit more like you're a part of the process. And then if you have an eraser, you can eliminate areas where you want the, the white to come back. See that? This will say maybe I want there to be a white line right there. I can actually see where I can create lines with the eraser in addition to the lines with the pencil. So with this cactus, we'll just stick with this one for now. We're going to add some spines along the contour lines. Harry, how's your drawing coming? You getting a hold of this okay? Yeah, do you want to make a reappearance? You want to show everybody what you got? You do? Okay, great. So this new technology we're using for the class today allows us to have a guest on the show. And so maybe in the future, maybe you could be a guest if you wanted to, and you could show your drawing in the middle. And we're going to switch to Harry right now. Welcome, Harry. What do, what do you have? Whoa, you're doing great. Look at, oh, that's a beautiful cactus. You've got some friends with you drawing too. That's, that's exciting. That's a great, it's great shading. Look at the highlights on that. Great proportion. Well done, Harry. Everybody give Harry a round of applause. That's awesome. He did such a good job. Way to go, Harry. That's great. I'm so impressed. All right, we're going to come back to you in a little bit. All right. We will see you shortly. Bye, Harry. All right, guys. Now we are going to do our actual desert scene drawing. So you can take this drawing to the side. This will be our final drawing for the day. Now, Sometimes a white page can be really intimidating. And sometimes it's hard to start and you don't know where to go and where, where to, to put the first mark. And so it can be paralyzing. So what I like to do is create a doodle. I like to draw a random shape or line just to make a mark on the page. So 
it's no longer perfect. It's already been impacted and the pressure to try to create something that's perfect is no longer there. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're just going to create some random lines. Like that. And yours is going to look different than mine. That is okay. You can copy mine if you want to, but it's just going to look random. And then we're going to turn this into a Lent desert scene. So here's where you can get creative and use your imagination. I showed you some pictures before. You can put them up again, actually, maybe. Let's see. You can see them again. Different kinds of landscapes. Look at the doodle you just made. And do you see anything similar? Anything stand out? This one is really interesting to look at. And definitely see elements in my drawing. Maybe there's a mountain in your doodle. Maybe there's a cactus that is already appearing. Okay, we're going to dive in now. Anytime you do a landscape drawing, there's always a horizon line. So now is your time to pick where you want the horizon line to be. In this doodle, anything that's above the horizon line is probably going to be something in the in the sky or in the distance. So it could be a really tall cactus. It could be a mountain. And then anything below the horizon line will be something in the foreground, which could be a cactus or a rock or a hill. So I'm just going to draw a line right through the middle here. And that's my horizon line. And I want to have a sun over here. That's going to help me know where to put shadows and then these two rocks are going to be mountains that are going to be in the background so i'm going to just darken them a little bit maybe they're actually pretty jagged mountains. And then I'll draw a new line for this mountain i'm going to stop here because i think this is going to be a cactus here And this is going to be a cactus too. So I'm going to darken these cactus here. And this one I'm going to add one of those arms that we drew. Side of it. And here you're just using your imagination. You're just getting creative. No right or wrong answer. It's whatever you want your world to look like. Okay, so this is going to have another arm on it over here. So right now we're just placing different objects. I think there's actually going to be another mountain in the far back distance. A little bit lighter. Something you'll notice that I do with the line is I create darker or lighter lines. The value of the line helps to determine where it is in the picture. It can also be called atmospheric. I'm adding an atmosphere to the drawing by creating a lighter line. If you're driving and you look at the mountains, you'll often notice that the mountains that are further back actually are very, very light. So maybe there's actually another really big mountain really far back. The closer mountains are probably going to have some more specific shadow. I'm going to use this line that's here because I like that shape. And I'm going to shade this side of this mountain. And then I'm going to add one of those lines that are similar to it on this side, but I'm going to make it much more jagged. Now I'm shading the left side where the sun is not going to hit. So a mountain, in this instance, is much different than a sphere. So it's going to be a hard line shadow. And 
And then we're going to have another shadow over here. All right. So the horizon line is going to come across here and stop at that cactus and continue on the other side. Same over here. I'm not sure what's going to happen over here yet, so I'm going to leave that blank. And then the mountains that's behind this one, I'm going to add a little bit of a tone to it. And then the one that's behind that, much lighter shade. So Lent is a time of sacrifice and prayer and fasting and it can be hard and sometimes life is like that sometimes there's seasons of life that feel like a desert it feels like it's hard feels like it's dry and challenging but it's just a season and after lent then comes easter and then we feast we have great meals and celebration you just have to remember that when life is hard, sometimes it's just a season and it'll end. You just have to get through the hard part. All right, now I'm going to add some contour lines to these cactus. I'm not going to have any flowers because this is this is the Lent time. There's no there's no flowers coming right now. But we're going to add some spines, and then we'll shade this cactus here in a minute. All right. So the sun is here. So it shoots in this direction. That's why you have the side of the mountain shadowed. This cactus will be sh shaded on this side here. But this one, it's actually going to be shaded on this side because the sun is coming this way. And this arm is going to create a hard shadow below it. And then we're going to leave a little bit of light wrapping around on this arm, but it is going to be shadow on this side here. And then it fades out to the left. There will be a shadow on the ground. All right, it's coming together. So I'm going to deal with these little lines here. So I think there's going to be a tiny little hill right here. And there's going to be some rocks on the ground. So when you're creating things like rocks, try to clump items together if you create rocks on the ground and you make rocks like this they look more like circles because they're not connected they're not clumped together but by clumping the rocks together it makes them feel like they're actually an object and not just a circle on the ground and maybe some of them are in the background so a little bit darker some put some shadow on each of them and then some shadow on the ground that helps them not feel like they're floating on the page and this hill is going to have a little bit of a shadow too Something else that I liked in one of the drawings was patches of grass. And so grass can be as simple as just drawing some lines like that. So we're coming out of the rocks here, some in front of the rocks, some over by the cactus. 
So when I draw grass patches, I make a stroke that's thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. It really comes down to the speed and the pressure. You push hard and then you let go. And it creates almost a triangle in the, in the shape. If you were to zoom up close to each of those pieces of grass, they look like this, right? But I'm just doing it with a single stroke. It takes practice, but it makes it look really cool. And then I'm also doing one tall in the middle and then smaller as they go off to the sides. Makes it feel like it's on a little bit of a mound of, of grass. I'm just using this hill as a guide for this patch of grass. Let's go ahead and finish this cactus over here. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna draw I'm going to use this as another hill and draw some rocks on this hill. And some grass. Shadow on these rocks. You can see I'm not being super particular. I'm really just trying to create the emotion of a rock. I'm not going in and making lots of tiny little lines and marks. Just to make it look like rock. All right, now we'll finish this cactus. So the reason I put the hill there first is because the cactus is actually is behind. I'm going to drop them down below. We'll do our contour lines. And then some of our spikes and spines. And now we'll add some shadow to him. So again, you can see it's darker here, opposite side of the sun. Sun wraps around, so there's a little halo of light. Looking through on this side, pretty dark here. Actually, dark in my contour lines because you can't see them. And then fades off. Same thing on the arms. Okay, I think we're getting close to the end of the drawing. I'm going to add a couple more elements. I've got this line here and here that I want to do something with. And so I think I'm actually going to have a tree, a dead tree, come up here. So since this tree is very close to the person looking at this picture, it's going to be all black. And that's really going to make it feel like it is really close to you. It's like a solar eclipse. The sun is being blocked out. You guys know what the solar eclipse is? Have you heard there's a solar eclipse coming? April 8th. Here, I am just creating tiny lines for each of the branches of this dead tree. And the technique I use to create these lines is I roll the pencil. I don't know if you can see this or not. I roll it. I'll show you. Because trees are organic and the lines are not straight. If you drew a tree straight with straight lines, it's going to look like something created by a person. But God created the tree, and they are never straight. Very, very few. And so by rolling the pencil, it makes it chaotic and erratic. and helps it feel more like something in nature. See that? You don't have to do it a lot. I'm going to be exaggerating it here so you can kind of get the idea. But the rolling of it helps it to 
become a jagged line. You're, it's too easy for you as an artist to just want to draw a straight line. So to break that, I roll the pencil. Yeah, that's a pretty extreme branch, but you get the idea. We don't have to have too many of these, but if you wanted to spend time, you could add quite a few because there are lots of branches on a tree. But you get the idea. All right, I'm going to add some more grass here. And I think we are just about done. I think I might add an eagle flying through the sky. So to make an eagle, we draw a circle for the head, a circle for the body, the tail flies out this way, Those, the wings are gonna reach out and then curve down. Oh, curve down. But the basic shape we're gonna go after here These would be the arms, and then the feathers come out from here. So I'm drawing very detailed right now, but I'm not actually going to do this detail on the drawing. I'm just showing you how the overall form of an eagle would look like. Here I'm actually going to draw it a little bit smaller, but the same idea. But because he's going to be all in shadow because the sun is behind him, I don't need all of that detailed work. I can just do a quick outline, color him in, and he will feel like he is flying in front of the sun. Yeah. All right, Harry, do you want to come back out and show everybody what you've done? I think everyone would love to see your drawing. I think we're about finished here. I hope you had fun with this activity. I hope the doodle helped to create some unexpected surprises in your drawing and help you to really get free and come up with something fun and unique. Please send your drawings my way. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Let's see how Harry did. All right, Harry. Whoa, Harry. That looks so good. Good job. Look at the cactus and the shadows and the mountain. Nicely done, Harry. Well, Harry, I was mentioning to the kids before that sometimes drawing can be challenging. And sometimes in the, uh, the Lent season, in the desert, things get really discouraging and get really challenging and hard. And this may have been a hard drawing for some other people, too. But... You grow when you do things that are hard and you have to remember that it's a season just like when you ride a bike do you remember when you were riding a bike harry it was hard in the beginning like you fell maybe you got cuts and scrapes and really frustrated but right before you learn how to ride your bike it gets really hard and then you have this breakthrough where you realize oh i can do this i can ride a bike drawing is similar and life is similar. And so don't be afraid of hard things. Hard things aren't bad. There are times when you grow and when you can learn something new. And so lean into the Lent season. We are on the home stretch. And uh, I will see you guys again. Oh, wait, one more thing really quick. Don't go. I've got some drawings that people sent in last week. I would love to show you. These are some great drawings. Good job, everybody. Some good practice circles. Harry, they did good, yeah? Awesome sheep. I just did a good job. Another cute sheep. This is really cute. I love his eyes. Such a fun expression. Ooh, and the mean goat. Whoa, he's really mean. 
All right. Thank you guys so much for coming. We are going to close out. Harry, say goodbye to everybody. We'll see you guys next week. I hope you enjoyed the drawing today. Please send them to me. I'd love to see them. And have a good week. Bye, everybody.